Manuel, thank you for uh, spending the day with us. Um, thank you. We met at Basel. Yes. And obviously Basel was very successful for the brand. How's yes. been uh, Couture for you guys? Well, so far so good. Uh, it's been it's been quite productive. Uh, we saw a few partners. We did a few sales, which is good. We won a prize, which we're always happy to. Which is tell us a little about the prize. You have the trophy right there. Yeah, which is which is uh, yesterday we received the prize of the watch, the Couture Time uh, Architecture Selection Watch, uh, which basically is a competition uh, that regroups almost all the brands, and we won. The, the price for the best architecture watch. Which, and you have the watch right there, correct? Which, exactly, which is our, um, which is, do I have a cloth somewhere? No. But the band's very cool. Which is uh, our new product that we, we're gonna, which is gonna hit the market in, a, in a, about a month's time, which is the Steampunk uh, Chrono. So basically in our Titanic DNA line, we come up this year with the first Chrono. Uh, that really takes this uh, very strong identity, very retrofuturistic steampunk identity with the four pistons and uh, the, the, uh, the, this propeller which reminds the propeller of the Titanic plus the two counters which are inspired by manometers of the machinery rooms uh, of the boats and we have a very interesting feat where the, the propeller is connected to the oscillating weight and whenever you move the watch, the propeller accelerates by four times the movements. And with the sequential sy system, is unidirectional. So it gives a very nice little touch to the watch and creates a nice animation. This is a specific brand we, we, band we put this watch on, which is a tattooed uh, band, which is been tattooed by a very great tattoo artist, which is called Mo Coppoletta, which is based in London. And he made some tattoos. He physically tattooed the bracelet before we put it together with designs that are in that the inspiration actually comes from the marine tattoos of the early 20th century, so when, when actually the Titanic uh, was built. It's always a little feature which makes it unique, so you get not only a very cool watch, but also a very unique and very special bracelet. I'm actually wearing one of these bracelets on my watch, and I've been wearing it for the last hmm, almost two, uh, 18 months. And what I like is that over time, it really creates a cool patina. It really becomes, you know, it oldens very well over time. And it gives a very, very personal and very unique touch. Tell us a little about the reason why um, you came here and a little about what you've accomplished since you've been here and then about some of the things that you plan to do over the future. Well, listen, I've, I've been working 10 years in the Swatch Group. I've been in the management of the Swatch Group and the extended board. Within Swatch Group, I built up a company, a classical watch, a high-end watch company, which is called Jacket O. We started two people. I left one were in 80. I was in charge of Eastern Europe. I built up the subsidiary of Swatch Group, and I was also in the Swatch management for a, for a certain period of time. But, you know, after a few years, after 10 years, we're actually in the Swatch Group, I really felt the need of doing something different, of changing my spirit and changing my uh, changing the perspective, have a little bit of fun, do unusual things and I think Roman Jerome is the most unusual and iconoclastic brand within the whole industry and I was really attracted to do something where I was not expected which is totally out of the, the beaten tracks and well like any brand, you know, when it work, uh, you, the first thing you have to do is to have a brand organization that works. So the first, most intensive work has been to reorganize, reprocess the company, put in structure, process flows, ERP systems. We we hired watchmakers. We build up our own production facility and assembly facility. We integrated quality control and uh, we also integrated after sales service which seems very basic, but that wasn't existing in, within the company. Then we also changed the whole pro, uh, visual identity. We created them younger, more aggressive, more striking, more, uh, a more unusual, more modern um, contemporary uh, style. We changed the whole product, uh, the product lines by basically incorporating more craftsmanship, more uh, high-end Swiss-made uh, components within our watches to extend that every and every single item in our watches is now Swiss-made. Um, 
in order to give the watch more perceived value, more quality, more craftsmanship, more Swiss made, um, a more striking design, a more st a stronger identity in the product as well. Um, and your sales, I was reading, is up considerably. I mean, well, when I took over the brand, we're doing 800 watches a year, and we're now up to two, two and a half thousand. Uh, so it's, it's been quite it's a, a three hundred percent increase. Yeah, it's a pretty substantial. And what I do like, because um, you talked about building like a cool, hip, younger type of product, um, you have a, a complete wide variety of watches. As we saw the Space mm -hmm. Invader watch, then we saw the Turbion watches. Um, are you involved in the creation of these pieces too with the team? Tell us a little about who you know how you work with how the creation. We well, listen, I, I've done two, um, two studies, types of studies, I did economical studies, but I also did design studies. I've been in doing Art Center, uh, which is where they have uh, now they're in Pasadena, but they, they used to have a satellite in Switzerland, which I made. So, and I did specialize a little bit in automotive design. So design is a very important aspect in my life, and I'm very involved uh, still in the design process. I obviously don't have the time to design myself all the watches, but I, st I still do a few, and I do a lot of artistic directory on basically everything. So this is a very, very important uh, element in, 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 in my daily uh, operations and my daily life and of daily responsibilities. And that's what you know. I think is important and what we kind of wanted to cover is really about what your goals are for the future of the brand. Where where do you see the brand in five, ten years from today? So basically talking when I'll be 50, how do you see, yeah, that, that, that's a tough question. It's probably, uh, and I'll see, uh, I'm not sure that at 50, is the, I'm, I'm not getting too old for that brand. But anyway, um, I think it has. it's a brand that has a huge potential. Uh, it's the brand that is very iconoclastic, that sticks out of all the others within the industry. It has a unique positioning and therefore I think a very high p uh, potential of growth. And I see ourselves, I think we, we can easily reach on the first step to four or five thousand uh, pro products per year uh, level and, and reach 40, 50 million turnover basis which we're looking to reach in the next two to three years and from then on to grow and to establish ourselves as a unique and different uh, brand within the industry. And I would love to build a manufacturing facility, uh, but that is different where you just don't, don't only have engravers or, or, or um, enamel painters or classical craftsmen, but why not you have the two artists which are working, which are customizing your bracelets within this manufacturing facility you have artists that custom made uh, you know, some of the pieces and so on and so on. We can, I think we can really build something that is out of the beaten tracks, that is much more contemporary, that is much more appealing to, I think, a younger taste. And there's a whole open field that we can cover in the next few years.